Welcome to Westside Library's virtual STEM class. Today we will be talking about cryptology, which is the coding and decoding of secret messages. If this is something that sounds like what spies would use, you are correct. Historically, intelligence, gathering of information to send from one place to another, had to be sent in a secret message so the enemy wouldn't know your movements. And there were a lot of ways to do that. Now, nowadays, uh, cryptology, the encoding and decoding of messages is done by computers. It's done with algorithms, and we're not going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about um, cryptology the way it would have been done in the past. Um, historically, very simple methods were used to code and decode messages to send between um, agents, spies. Um, one of the examples is a Caesar cipher wheel. And this is what we will actually be making to code and decode our messages today. So in your kit, you have a brad or paper fastener and a sheet with your cipher wheel template. You are going to need scissors and a pen or pencil. Uh, optionally, you can color your cipher wheel and decorate it. Um, I actually uh, colored in my circles just to make it pretty, but you can just leave it this way. All right. So before we get into making our Caesar cipher wheel, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about cryptology, how it's been used historically, and how cryptology has actually influenced American history. Hi, today we will be talking about ciphers and codes. Okay, so with ciphers and codes, encryption is the way that the messages are formed. A code replaces word, phrases, or sentences with groups of letters or numbers. And ciphers rearrange those letters or use the substitutions to disguise the message. So this whole process is called encryption. And when we take that encrypted message and we translate it back into the regular um, letters and numbers, that's called decryption. So, how has cryptology been used? The art of secret message writing is as old as time. Actually, the cipher we will be doing today, the Caesar cipher wheel, is one of the oldest ways to encrypt a message. As the name implies, it is believed that Julius Caesar actually used this, me this method to send messages. So, cryptology has long been employed by governments, military, businesses to protect messages. Today, encryption is incredibly important because it is used to protect and store data and, trans and transactions between computers. Oh. Hi. Okay, so one of the most famous examples of how um, ciphers and codes were used in history is during the American Revolution. So George Washington needed to know what the British were up to. He tasked Benjamin Talmadge with this. Uh, Talmadge forms the Culper Spy Ring. Um, the Culper Spy Ring is mostly well known for bringing down Benedict Arnold. Benedict Arnold is kind of an interesting character. Um, 
he starts as an American patriot. He serves in the American army. Um, he actually becomes a general, but he's deeply unhappy. He doesn't think he's gotten the recognition he deserves. He's gotten passed over for some field um, commands. Um, he's resentful and angry. So the British are looking for people that they can turn. And Arnold's ripe for the plucking. The British offer him what they what he thinks he wants, and Arnold starts spying for them. Now, Arnold at this time is actually in charge of West Point. West Point during the American Revolution, it's not a school military school. It is actually an important fort that is key for us holding out against the British and are in charge of this fort. So Arnold is a spy for Br the British. Um, he agrees to turn it over to him. He has the plans. Uh, he also has plans for several other military installations that the Americans have. Um, and he's just gonna, he's gonna just serve it up to the British on a silver clock. But before this could happen, um, the Culper spy ring discovers that Arnold is a spy and stops him. Now, the Culper ring is owned nowadays, and there are six members. Um, they use several methods to pass codes along. Um, they used... Um, they would hide messages inside everyday objects that were passed along. Um, they certainly used um, like ciphers, like the one we'll be making today. They would like send letters to people that were innocent looking. It was just like, hey, I'm writing my cousin. And it would look like an ordinary letter, but on the back, they would have a separate message written out in invisible ink. ink. Um, one of the things I think was really cool was Anna Strong. She was part of the Culper Ring, and she would take her wash. And when there was a message to drop off or pick up, she would signal that there was a new um, by hanging up different color petticoats on her clothesline. So, you know, there was a very variety of methods, some complicated, some really simple. But without them, without them discovering this, um, we could have lost the American Revolution. So the art of being able to pass messages, secret messages between spies to get those information to people that need it, is incredibly important and can be the key difference between losing a battle, losing a war. Um, you know, so if you are more, if you are interested in learning more about this, there are some links. All right, if you're interested in learning more about um, cryptology and its use throughout history, um, there are some links that you can follow. One talks about Morse code. Morse code was really important at the latter part of the 1800s in the early 1900s because it allowed messages to travel long distance through a cable. So if somebody was in New York, they could send a message to someone out in California and it would only take a few minutes versus a weeks or even days for a letter to travel. Um, and actually they got proficient with the technology and they were able to send um, Morse code messages through telegraph lines across the ocean. So someone in New York could send a message to London or Paris instantly. You could literally talk to somebody in real time. Um, I know this sound, we do this all the time nowadays, but then that was revolutionary. Okay, two of the links deal with World War II. 
One is the Enigma machine. The Enigma machine, the Germans had came up with the Enigma, Enigma machine, and this is the way they coded their messages. Early during the war, about 38, 39, the British get their hands on one and are able to crack the codes the Germans are using. So throughout the war, the British and later the Americans, once we get into World War II, know what the Brit know what the Germans are up to. And the Germans have no idea, idea that we know what they're doing. Um, so this was incredibly important for us to help us win the war. Um, another, uh, during World War II, the Americans um, used Navajo Indians as on the radio systems. So the Navajo Indians have their own language and they employed these Navajo Indians who were fluent in Navajo to send messages over radio. So radio, the Germans with satellite, they, if they got lucky, they could list sometimes pick up American broadcasting. But because the broadcast was in Navajo, the Germans didn't know what in the world they were saying. They were just, you know, they might have, they had no idea what this was. Um, so it was, so the Americans, by in doing this, by using the app, by employing the Navajo Indians um, and the use of the Navajo language, were able to keep um, radio messages between the Allies coded and the British and the Germans from knowing what we were doing, which is always good. And um, then there is, the last website is just kind of a general website on secret codes and code breaking through history. All right, so let's get back and actually make our Caesar Cipher wheel. In your kit, um, you have your Cipher wheel template and a paper fastener or brad. And in addition to that, you're gonna need the pen and a pair of scissors. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is take your cipher wheel template and you are going to write the alphabet in along the outer circle on the big wheel and the small wheel. One letter goes in each space. And you do the same thing for the small wheel. your template filled out like this we are going to cut it out
doesn't it? Oops. My wheels I didn't color it I just wrote it out in pen um, the one I made earlier I actually colored in um, you can actually take this and decorate it make it colorful write your lettering in different color inks um, or just keep it really really plain that's kind of up to you and how you know fancy you want your cipher wheel to be um, the main thing is just making sure that you write out your alphabet along and along the outer edge in your big and little circles. Okay, so to put this together, you have your big and little circle cut out. You are going in the center, there is like a black dot. You are actually going to make a hole in the center. Um, this would definitely be a part of it that where you'd get an adult to help you. This is a mom and dad part of the project. Um, scissors work good. Um, pen, I punched it in. Uh, just get that hole started because you're going to take your paper fastener and you are going to put it through the hole in the center on the little wheel and then put that little wheel on top of the big wheel and then fold down your paper fastener uh, they're also called brads so all right so now we're going to get to the fun part so we have our cipher wheel um i'm going to use the, this one because i just like it better I like, I like the, the one that's colorful. Okay, so to, all right, so to use your cipher wheel, you use it two ways. One, you send a message coded, um, and then you also use it to decode the secret message. All right, so I have a piece of paper here and say, I am a spy during the Revolutionary War. And I have seen some British troops pass through my town. And I want to send a message to one of my fellow spies so they can tell um, the American army, hey, I spot British troops were spotted here. Um, so what am I going to do? So I am going to write out my message. Okay. Um, spotted is S P O T E D. T T. Oh, that's even better. Uh, uh, that's a that's better. I'm like going. Okay. Okay. So we have our message we want to send. Red coat spotted at the river. All right. So, but, so we need to send this message. But we don't want anybody to know that we're sending this. So how would we do that? All right. One of the ways to do that is through 
are using a something like the Caesar Cipher wheel, or, and this is just kind of cool, is that you could actually use invisible ink. Now, historically, there have been actual formulas for, his, for invisible ink. Unfortunately, that has been lost to time. We don't know exactly, um, like, um, the spy circle that brought down Benjamin, like the spy circle that brought down Benedict Arnold. One of the ways they passed messages was using invisible ink, but the specific formula that was used around that time, we don't know it. Um, they actually, they have not been able to crack all the ingredients in it. So, um, but a really old and really basic technique for using invisible ink is lemon juice. So here I have some lemon juice and I'm going to um, write a message on this piece of paper using a paintbrush. Okay. So you let that dry and then when you apply heat, you can see it. Are you able to see this at all on camera? Okay. Are you going to be able to edit out this or do I need to just kind of, let me start over. Okay. You can. It just, it's not, see, you can't see it. Okay. Yeah. It's just, it, you're not seeing. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, I'm not going. You can see. <laughs> yeah but we can't and i can't actually use anything with fire we've already went through that i'm not allowed to play with fire yeah we've actually yeah that, that was a whole conversation <laughs> i know i'm like yes <laughs> Oh, trust, I'm like going, yeah, I'm like, I know, it's like, I can do whatever I want. I just can't actually violate library safety protocols. <laughs> I, I know, they did some incredibly cool stuff. Yeah. But no, I can't, no, I'm not allowed to play with fire. Okay. Okay. So, all right, so we have our cipher wheel and we want to send a message to one of our fellow agents. Okay, so for this example, I am a spy during the American Revolution, and I have just spotted the red coats around my town. So I need to tell one of my fellow spies that the what the British are up to. So how would I do that? First off, I would take and write out the message I want to send. Okay. All right, so. All right, I have my message I want to send. 
So, but if this letter was discovered um, in between after I sent it, I don't want anybody to be able to understand this message. I want to keep it hidden, secret. So, how would I do that? One way is to use my cipher wheel. All right, so to use your cipher wheel, you are going to take in line up your letters. So your A on your smaller wheel needs to line up with the A on the outer wheel, like this. And then you decide how many shifts to the right or to the left you are going to use to code your message. So I am going to use a shift of six to the right. So I would count one, two, three, four, five, six. This means G becomes A. Now, in order, so this is the code I'm using to send my message. The people on the other end have to know what shift I'm using so they can set their cipher wheel correctly and be able to decode the message. Um, there are different ways to do that. Um, speaking of the American Revolution, um, Anna Strong uh, was a local woman who worked with the spy ring that, broke, that brought down Benedict Arnold. One of the things that she would do would be to hang different color petticoats on her clothesline to signal if there was a message to be picked up, um, where the message was to be dropped, and also um, what code they were using for the message. So, um, it was really kind of things like that that were used. So it looked very normal, plain. It was something that was hidden, but in plain sight. All right, so back to our message. The red coats are, have been spotted. We wanna get that information. So, so we use our outer wheel to find, okay, so R is X, and we go to the letter E is Y, D is J, C is I, O is I, O. C, 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 C. C is W. See, I messed up. All right. And you always follow along your inner wheel and to find the correct letter of the alphabet and then match it to what letter is on the outer wheel. Okay, so A is G. T is N. S is N. M. J. Oh, N, N, E, D, S, J. All right, and we already know some of these letters, so N, N. Okay, let's find H on here, B, Y. X, C, O, 
P. So I need E as Y and X. Okay. All right. So we have our original message encrypted. So, and when we wrote it out in here, it would look like this. Okay. I know. And so if anybody saw this, it looks like gibberish. It looks like what in the world is that? But um, even this, you know, if the message was discovered, you could, you know, you could tell like, okay, this is something that's written in code. So how could you even um, hide this further? One of the ways they would hide this even further is they would take and write out a regular letter because back in then, they didn't have phones, there was no text messages, social media, Facebook, you wrote letters to people. So they would write a letter to somebody and then it looked just like a regular, normal letter. You send to your mom, your cousin, best friend. And then on the back, they would write a second letter that would be like this. But this was done in invisible ink and depending on the formula they used sometimes um the one that they would use for um like during the revolutionary war that formula actually has been lost we don't know exactly all the ingredients that they used but um a really old um way to do invisible ink that is very simple is lemon juice. Lemon juice, when you write, you can write your message out um, on a piece of paper using like a paintbrush and you let it dry, it's invisible. But when you apply heat to the paper and you can do this by actually blowing a hair dryer on the message, it would, the lemon juice appears. So it's heat activated. Um, so back then they wouldn't have been using a hair dryer. They probably would have held it up to the fire or a candle, but basically there is a reaction in the acid in the lemon juice that makes it visible when heat is applied to it. Um, unfortunately, it's really kind of cool. Uh, if you have a lemon at home, it would be a fun activity to do. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't appearing on film very well, so um, I won't be showing that. All right, so we have our secret message. All right, so I send this off. It makes it through, my fellow spy has gotten it, and they knew I used a shift of six to the right. So they break out their Caesar cipher wheel, and you line up the A on the inner wheel to the A on the outer wheel, and I count six bases. One, two, three, four, five, six. A becomes G. And then I follow the letters in the inner wheel. So I know X is R. And then E. Then Y is E, and J is D. And you keep doing this until you would have the full message spelt out. So that is 
one of the most basic ways that you can code and decode a secret message. Uh, in your kit at the bottom of your directions, you will actually find a coded message for you to practice. So I hope you have fun and come up with lots of messages you and your friends could pass along. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed learning more about ciphers and cryptology. If you are interested in learning more about ciphers, cryptology, spies, or just a good mystery that features this subject, then check out these or other titles at any Rapids Parish Library branch. Along with our physical locations, you can also check out books on Libby, Hoopla, or Cloud Library for our digital offerings. If you are interested in our STEM programs, please sign up for our October program by calling Westside Library at 318-442-2483, extension 1902. Bye, and I hope to see you again in October.